All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a uh, probably an extended version of the On My Block podcast. Packers podcast. I'm your host, Mike Wall. You can find me, Mike Wall68, on Twitter, process to perform. On Instagram, as it says, we are part of the Believe Network, presented by betonline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and match reports for baseball, boxing, golf, esports, football, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and get into the action. Remember, you use your promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Had I bet with BELIEVE yesterday, put $100 down, would have gotten 150 with my welcome bonus on the Packers because they were minus, I think, minus one at kickoff. I would have lost. My, I would have lost only $100. So, you know, it's funny. My, my daughter was uh, introduced me to – there's a new phenomenon on the internet called girl math. And uh, she was introducing me to girl math. And I wonder now if I bet 100 but then I really bet 150 but I really lost 100 I wonder if I won 50 bucks there. I'm going to have to ask her when she gets home. Anyways, the Packers blew this game. Just call it what it is. You blow the game. You have an opportunity against with the lowly Raiders. We lose thirteen to seventeen, and there's so many questions coming out of this game. We're going to try to hit the tape. We're going to try to address some listener questions. But just a real quick, you know, Jordan Love is. You start off the season and like look anybody who watches tape. There's like two kinds of 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 prognosticators, fans, you know, people who are watching this casually, people who are talking on TV. You either just go to the results, you look at the box score, and you go, oh, he's you know, pass rating super high. He's got five five touchdowns and interceptions. Or you turn on the tape and you go, okay, there's a lot of meat on that bone. we got a lot to work with, but there's also a lot of work to do. So the first couple of games, everybody's happy. And now the last two games, hasn't played as well last night. Uh, 16 to 30, 182 yards, three picks. Um, the last one you can hang probably on. You know, you, you, your your guy Watson's got to get back and help him out a little bit, but you know, realistically, you have 182 yards. 77 yards is on a blown a blown coverage with with Christian Watson, who gets who gets collar to the horse tackle collar, probably the play of the day. Um, you go into this game and you're thinking to yourself, all right, the Raiders don't. This is a this was a get right game for both teams in the run game, and so AJ Dillon. Aaron Jones can't play at the last minute. I think everybody thought Aaron was going to play. It, it looked like Matt LaFleur thought what Aaron was going to play because the way that they structured the game plan doesn't make sense unless Aaron Jones is playing. So AJ comes out. He's, he's got 20 carries for 76 yards, 3.8 yards a carry, which is better than he's been doing, to be fair. And I think he ran hard last night, but there's a lot of meat on that bone, man. And if you take away Love's two scrambles, which were, I think – Gosh, what do you have? 30, I can't remember, 30 some odd yards. You have 23 rushes for 73 yards for a 3.1 yards per carry. So you're kind of back looking against a Raiders defense who's been bad in the run game. They look pretty good. 3. Point yards, yards per carry, even, even at 3.8. Um, not a very good night in the run game, although I thought they did some things well. And again, I think there's a lot of meat on that bone. What you have to look at when you when you watch this game plan, when you're Talking about anything in general, but when you watch the run game very specifically right now, they have a defensive player of the year candidate, Mason Crosby. He's the best player that I've seen play at right now at, in a long time. You can go ahead and say, look, I like Nick Bosa. I like this. I like, Mike, I like Miles Garrett. Like, I get everything you're saying. I'm just telling for me, I don't know how to block him. Like, I don't, he doesn't make sense the way he moves. This piece plastic man. And I've never seen a dude since JJ Watt that can just keep playing at like a high level. Most guys are done three, four plays. They got to get a break. This dude can just go and go and go. And it's absolutely, it's like that Marshawn Lynch uh, thing that's going around when you hit a guy in the mouth over and over. And he just does it over and over. And this guy can just play, man. I am, I was, I was super impressed watching him on tape before this game. And last night he's a really good player. Did not disappoint. Um, Defensively, we held them to 17 points. That is good enough to win a ball game. We've talked about it on this show. If you hold a team to 20 or less, you need to win that game. You need to win that game. 
Now, there's things that we did in this game that I really liked. Number one, we're talking, we're talking about Quay Walker being more aggressive to the line of scrimmage, trying to reset the line of scrimmage or meeting the, the fullback in the hole. They did that. They actually did that by, by design. Last night, fullbacks in the game, they're shooting the gap. Now, most of the time it works. Some of the time it doesn't because somebody else doesn't cover up their gap. Somebody gets pushed off, but you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one blocks. You make the running back jump cut in the backfield. Josh Jacobs is a great runner, but he's not having a great year, and he's obviously better when he's going full speed than when he has to slow down and jump cut in the backfield. So I thought that went really well. Um, even when Quay went out, you know, Quay did a good job early in the game, but you know when he went out with the injury, we were still trying to keep that fullback and play on their side of the line of scrimmage. McDuffie led the team in tackles. You can see where there's a drop-off, maybe in the passing game, but particularly when Quay's not in there. And obviously, you know, Devon or Campbell not playing. Um, our defensive line played well. I mean, we had four guys with a sack and a tackle for loss. Kenny Clark, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, and, and, and Igbari all had a sack and a tackle for loss. And, and the reason I bring that up is, the Raiders run the ball 26 times for 96 yards for 3.3 yards a, a carry. That's winning football. Like, I know it's above their season average of like 63 yards, whatever it is, but that's winning football. You have to win when you're playing that way. Jimmy Garoppolo, 22 for 31. Okay, 208 yards, touchdown and a, and a pick. You know, Devontae Adams, 4 for 45, made some plays in that one drive that were important plays. You gave up 17 points. And you, you had a goal line stand on a, on a turnover from Jordan Love. I mean, you're playing good enough to win. And all of a sudden, this what you had at one point in your in your history as an offensive power juggernaut, you lose a quarterback, your left tackle's hurt, you're losing your running back. You you you're missing guys at these at these at these spots that just you can't not have a guy in this offense. You know, number one, the quarterback position. Jordan Loves could be the guy. Everybody jumped on the bandwagon because they're looking at the stat sheet. But he's got a long ways to go. I think this is just proves he got, the guy's got a long ways to go. And quite frankly, the way their game plan last night didn't help him. And we'll look at it. Let's look at it right now. Let's talk about defense first because I think they played well. There's some miscues in here, you know, obviously. So you got you're, you're looking at a shell safety right here, but they don't run shell. They go back into single high. We're cutting across the crosser. This is the first play of the game. And they just run a, a naked boot to the tight end out the backside. And, you know, either your linebacker, because Jair Alexander's out there playing. He's playing thirds. Either your linebacker or your or Rashawn Gary, somebody's got to pick up the tight end. You can't get a free first down. That's not how you start a game, you know? A lot of good things in here, but you you still got to figure out what's going on. Like right here, they motion over. This is man coverage on the bottom. What are they playing up top? Because now you get Rudy Ford in the box, the tight end position. Devontae Adams comes across. Nobody goes with him. You're manned up on the box. I mean, are we saying that Quay is going to pick up Devontae Adams? Is that where – I mean, is that – is that where we're going? I don't know if we pass that off. Uh, I don't know if we need to rotate coverage with the safety, but it, these things don't make sense. And obviously they're game planning for this stuff, right? Quay gets over there, makes the tackle, not before Devontae gets to uh, the, the first down. But those kind of things you have to self-scout, look at yourself and go, is that a communication issue? Just by, do we out-scheme right there? Sometimes you're going to get out-schemed. As much as everybody wants to complain about the, the run game, Joe Barry, I can sit here on paper and draw anything that's going to beat whatever you put up. Like if you give me enough time and, and enough pieces of paper, I'll beat you with something. All right. It comes down to the timing of calling plays, taking away as many things as possible, and then having your players execute. I love this part of the game, attacking the fullback. You see Quay – we got a fullback in the backfield. He's just shooting the gap. We're not wasting time anymore. Bring the fight to them. Now, it's not always going to work. There are ways to defeat this, just like you know, I've been saying. I've been preaching this for weeks. Let's get him to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. So I, I love this, but I do understand there's limitations. You can't do it every play. See it again here. Got the fullback in the backfield. 
They want to shoot and bring him up. And what it does is it just creates single blocks across the line. Safety comes in and makes a play. Don't know why this is uh, jump, skipping around. Showed a couple of these. Now 45's in the game. Quay's out, shoots the gap, boom, right? We're jump cutting in the backfield. Unfortunately, on this play, Josh Jacobs just gets enough of a downhill lane to run through a couple arm tackles. So it doesn't always work, right? But I like the aggressiveness. I like what you're trying to do. You still have to win your one-on-one -on -one matchups. The guys that are single blocked one-on-one, -on -one, you got to win. Sam Medino for life. Kenny Clark, baby. Guy's showing up. Last couple games. Here's another sack. I think he's got three for the season now. Just beat. Listen, 66 was the worst guy on their offensive line. You, you, you put your best guy on their worst guy, you take advantage. I'm surprised it didn't happen more. I mean, he, he did some good things in the run game as well. Now, when you play aggressive... You got a chance to get beaten to play action pass. And we just look at our, our, our second level defenders here. And we're up. Everyone's up. Quay's really the only one that figures it out. Duffy and Rudy Ford are out of position. Make Michael Mayer, the uh, first year tight end out of Notre Dame. Huge amount of space between the 30 and 40 yard line. Great throw gate catch. These are the things that if you're going to play aggressive and try to stop the run, this is what a good team does. They go under center, play action, stuff we talk about all the time. This is this is kind of a natural thing. They run the reverse here. Now we've got single safety. Corners are off 10 yards. We run the around. No one's chasing. And Lucas Van Ness is seeing the hipped off tight end on the high side. So what's he thinking? Oh, he's thinking split flow. Perfect. I'll blow this up. Right? It's like, where'd he go? Where'd who go? Okay. Quay gets caught inside as well. Gets gets pinned. And they have a good run. These are the things, when you're drawing stuff up for the week for game plan, you look at some of the things that they're going to key off of. You go, oh, what do we counter that to make these plays work? I thought, generally speaking, both teams did a pretty fair job of understanding what some of the keys and limitations are for the defense that they're playing against. And trying to find solutions for that problem. Okay. <laughs> this guy's playing the wrong sport. Devondre Wyatt, uh, Devante Wyatt got, gets one here. And we got all of a sudden, we got, oh, he's boxing out. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> Usually when you get beat this bad, you try to spin all the way around. He just keeps boxing the dude out. Like, he just <laughs> Until it's over, Preston finishes up with a sack. Let's give Preston a little love here, too, because great job coming downhill inside on Colton Miller, who they were singing his praises. I'm not sure about that. Arm over, back to the outside, gets him to open up. Easy play, sack. Preston's really been playing well. I mean, I know he had a sack last week, had a sack this week, but you just watch the quality of play. And again, like, we can't – I'm not going to compare him to Miles Garrett or Max Crosby, okay? But the quality of play that Preston's putting on tape right now, run game, it's he's just he's just a really, really solid player, man. And we talked about him needing to step up in the in the past game as far as more pressures, more sacks. Definitely did that uh this evening or last evening, excuse me. We're gonna shoot that gap again with Quay. Okay, so what happens here? They do a great job. I'll back it up so everybody can see this because this is an adjustment. The right guard. Sees his double to 58. Sees Kenny Clark coming across into the plus side A gap and slams the door shut. Isaiah McDuffie takes the backside route. Great adjustment by that guard. Absolutely great adjustment by the guard on the fly. I'm sure they practiced that all week. Okay, this is a huge no call in the game. And these are little things I know they I always add up. So I, this is like a third and one, fourth and one. Savage comes flying in off the right of your screen. Clearly gets pushed in the back here. It's a huge call. They get the first down. I mean, it's just like, it's a, that's a huge no call. You can't. Those are key calls in the game.
these are the kind of plays where as as from a secondary standpoint you're trying to figure out okay what exactly is it we're trying to do so you got two, you get a two high shell i think that's Jair down on the bottom okay so you got hook curl with your with your uh linebacker there with the arrow you're only reading one guy you you the the slot went out the the outside receiver's probably coming in you only got one read here you got to drive on this i mean that's just an easy play that's an easy drive. Ends up getting yards for a first down. Those are big. Those are big plays in games that don't need to happen. I mean, relatively. I mean, for that particular coverage with that particular look with the two by two, that is not a difficult read for that that hook curl player. We shoot. Stack it up. Again, I just love the aggressiveness, all right? You know this team's not throwing well. Garoppolo's not – I mean, they're 30th They're thirtieth in the rushing, but it, this is a get-right game for both teams based on historical precedence here. Jimmy Garoppolo gets, you know, what did I say, just over a shade over 200 yards passing. I mean, this is a great job being aggressive. This is the stuff down near the goal line, okay? But now so this is where we come into like a little bit of a philosophy issue. They pointed this out, I think, on, it, during the game. You got your heels or your toes on the end line. It's first and goal on the nine. So you're nine yards off, and the philosophy is what? That you're going to be able to drive on the slant and and make the tackle in the, in the green? I, say, I don't necessarily subscribe to this. This doesn't make sense just to me personally because my thought is, okay, well, if I lean forward, I'll probably get a touchdown. You're giving me enough right now that, and enough room to maneuver that I'm probably going to get to second and four or second to goal on the four. At, at like worst case scenario, even if they threw the bubble to me right now, I'm getting four or five yards. So I, this is a philosophy issue I don't quite understand. It's not like he doesn't drive. I mean, this should, this play should get blown up, you know? But this is the problem with running in this manner is, like, if you don't make the play, he's just going to drag you into the end zone. And, again, offensive player knows where they're going. That's the advantage. So even if you think you have a clean shot on it, you still have to react to movement. So we get a turnover on offense. This is a big-time stop in the game. I mean, this is defensively – as a from a team function, this is what exactly what you're asking for. Can we make plays? You key that linebacker again. Let's bring it. Everybody's in on the play. Preston's there first. I love it. Okay. This is where you miss, you know, you start missing Quay. Obviously, you know, Devondre, especially from two years ago, you start missing having your starting linebackers. Isaiah McDuffie, who I love. Has to see this crosser right behind him. He's two yards behind you. You're reading eyes. Like you got to have a little bit of awareness now. These are big plays in the football game. Good pick by Rudy Ford. What you'll see here is I'll go back this up a little bit. So I think Rudy comes from the back side here, drives underneath this route. But really, and we do this a lot from just talking about the Packers secondary, they fall off routes in anticipation a lot. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. But I think you can see Rasul Douglas has fallen off this route right here and about ready to make this play. You could say that the corner's open because of it, but they don't throw the corner. They throw the crosser. Rudy makes the play. Rasul's there as well. Big time. Now, we got lucky here. This is kind of the same stuff we're talking about. Jared Alexander's on the, on the bottom here. We're running cover two to the bottom side of the field. He's following in. We get a little bit of a scramble, and all of a sudden the tight end's wide open. Nobody's outside because we carried the the uh, the dig route inside on the 38. He's not making the touchdown, I, you know, but is he getting to the 50s? Is he crossing? You know, this again, these are – you score 13 to 17. Field position's important. Got lucky there. This is the kind of stuff – and I don't know – uh, scheme wise, I can take a guess. 
is probably the biggest run of their game, right? This 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 changes their yards per carry, you know, from under three to over three. This is the old kick play that we watch all the time. Every team's got this play in the book. You got the two tight ends over. Rashawn Gary decides to dominates this tight end, but then decides to take the inside gap. This play is designed to kick it out. The, they call it, we call it kick informally because they really want to run this to the left of Rashawn Gary as we're watching the screen. They want to hand this ball off, bounce it, and they just, they basically want to put Josh Jacobs on the cornerback outside, thinking that he's not going to close that space down, which he doesn't. So now you get vertical, and all of a sudden you got a 20-yard gain, 25-yard gain. Big play in the football game right there. So everyone's been talking about this play, obviously. Preston Smith, he got caught in here one more, one other time as well uh, when he was on the bottom of the screen. This is what happens, guys. They come out in 12, 21 personnel, multiple tight ends, multiple, you know, multiple running backs, and you want to play base. So a good coordinator, right? Josh McDaniels was with the New England Patriots for years when they used to run two tight ends out there. And they'd split them out outside the receivers, put the receivers in the slot and force you to play either man against, you know, tight ends versus corners and receivers versus linebackers, or you'd have to play zone, but they'd be able to read it. They put Devontae in at the slot here because they have to walk one of their linebackers out. They don't have any other people in the in the game. This isn't like a, a screw up. This is part of playing base defense. What if they do this? We'll have to live with it. They go empty backfield. The only way it works is if you go empty. They go empty backfield. They got a three by two on the bottom. Okay, so you have your slot on the two by on the two side being played by an outside linebacker who's not good in pass coverage. There's nothing to be done about this except call timeout. That's the only thing you can do. Comes at an inopportune time. Maybe they were saving it. They saw this earlier in the game. They take advantage right now. Get get Devontae uh, or Devontae Adams cooking a little bit. Sean Gary, backup uh, tackle comes in. I love this rip move by Rashawn. And I'd like to see, you'd like to see some more power. You know, obviously they're sending tight ends at him. They're doing a bunch of stuff. You want to get him back to where he's doing a lot of this rip with this. He just turns the corner real fast on this. So he's not overrunning the quarterback or turning this into just a power stab right here. Good job on the sack. Again, they had they had production. Now, this is another game plan thing where they start looking at you and go, okay, when we when this tight ends off, as he is to the left of our screen, he's hipped off that right tackle. We're expecting what? We're expecting split flow. That's what everybody runs. They're under center. They can run split flow. They could run the split flow play action pass game that we've already seen, but they're gonna run something that looks like split flow, right? Wrong. So we send 45 into the A. You got Isaiah McDuffie chasing the uh, the ghost, the X receiver coming across, or the Z receiver coming across. They're filling with 34, and they get a really critical first down. Again, you got 16 coming in trying to trying to uh, knock our safety kind of sideways. Joe's got to. Alexander's got to make the play, but it's still you know too too little, too late. Now, offensively, but uh, let's recap real quick. Defensively, we played pretty well. You can always play better. That's an NFL team. They have NFL players. They have they have players that have played at an extremely high level. Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, won at an extremely high level. Their quarterback, Jimmy G. Okay, they've got guys that can play. Our defense played well enough to win. Huge, huge goal line stand. Let's not minimize that. Defensive line came to play. Had some guys had to come and play linebacker, came to play. Still having some issues in the secondary, but I would say that you can make the argument that the secondary is the most difficult thing to become really, really good at. Offensively, this is, you know, I, I say this tongue in cheek. 
Our chances of winning went to zero on this play. I mean, come on. We don't flop. <laughs> I don't know what happened between the time that I retired and the time and now. And I love Zach Tom. But come on, man. This is not – this is some romper room stuff. You want to be the toughest team on the field, not that. I don't get that at all. We left some meat on the bone. And we're going to go through a lot of stuff here, but we left some meat on the bone, and, and, and AJ is running hard. AJ is missing – some of that dynamic vision and movement that you're going to get from an Aaron Jones. So we bring the tight end in motion so he can lead up here. One on the defensive end, John running junior leading up on the linebacker. You look at right here. We've got this bricked off at the receiver position as well. A bounce on this play, he could still be running. This is a 10-yard, 15-yard, 20. This is a huge game. This isn't a bad play. But you see that – go back a little bit more. So you see Elgin Jenkins and, and Rashid Walker – they try to get the double. Jenkins gets pushed into the center, and so they miss the backside linebacker. Okay, but they don't need to block him here if you just bounce. Everybody is, you know, kind of backs ass to the sideline on the left. Man, bounce. Take that safety on 1v1. Those are big plays. Could be big plays. This is straight out of the San Francisco 49ers playbook. I've actually highlighted this with Yuschek and Kittle from last season. So they bring 89 in motion, blocks, and now Musgrave's got to just put your, put your chest to the ground and run somewhere. Good run, right? Just create the hole. You know, the thing is, the key is, like, if you don't see a hole, you make a hole. That's it. That's just a mentality thing, and that's a and that's a, a a reps thing. He'll get that. We see that they're playing soft zone. Marcus Peters. They've been talking. They've talked about it on TV a lot last night. He really does play off, and he respects Christian Watson's speed here, which is crazy because he catches him later. But so the speed cut on the out, quick out, good way to start the game. But we got some growing pains. What am I talking about? Well. Luke Musgrave doesn't know the play. He doesn't know what the play is, or he's asking around. He's literally putting his, he's turning his head, putting his hand up. I don't know what's happening. There's a communication issue. This is the one that I think, I think this is the reason that McCarthy or uh, Matt LaFleur got on him on the sideline, but he ends up just running a little arrow out. That backside safety is now open for business. So Jordan Love can't put this ball where he wants. This could have been a pick. Can't get the route that we want. Bad deal. Growing pains. It's just part of it's part of what happens. Elton Jenkins back in business, right? There's some things that this guy does extremely well. Look at the movement for the outside zone. Attacks, gets the defensive tackles and Rashid Walker, but gets the deep. This is really this is Elton Jenkins being a really good player. Gets the defensive tackle's chest pointed towards the sideline, gets him four yards deep, and then ends up making the play on 41. We jump cut back, 10-yard gain. Absolutely phenomenal job. Now, Vegas, baby. Little John's in the house. Why is Little John in the house? Because I think the Packers need to take more shots, man. Because right there, Christian Watson has this guy absolutely done with. Little John's yelling, shot, 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 shot. Look at that. I mean, look, he's gone. He breaks down. They're running the route for him. They are running the route for him. Top of the numbers. Ball's on the hash. What's he doing? He's running a 15-yard dig. They're breaking on his route. There's nobody 
outside this ball, outside the numbers. There is nobody there for a fade. The safety is at the 23-yard line in the middle of the field. Those are touchdowns. Those are shots. When you start saying, why does Jordan Love throw the ball short? A lot of it's by design. Great ball by Jordan Love here, by the way. Great ball. This is the next play. They probably I don't know if they saw it. You know, you just don't know what people are thinking. Next play, though. Let's get cute. Let's do the orbit motion. Give him the ball. Poorly blocked. Five-yard loss. Reduces the chances of you making a touchdown, which we didn't. We got a field goal out of it. Reduces your chances by like 40% or something. I mean, some ridiculous thing. Now, this guy is an absolute nightmare for opposing offenses. And one thing I want to point out, the Green Bay Packers ran 21 and 12 personnel a ton last night. Sometimes they ran three tight ends, depending on what you want to call it or Gora. This, is, this, could be thir- this could be 13 or 22. A lot of the reason that they're doing that is because they're worried about this guy. Okay, because I, I, would, I think anybody would argue that the Packers aren't a great downhill running team, so why bring in big dudes? And I've always said, if you can't dance, don't come to the party. So if you've got tight ends, rookie tight ends, to try to block a potential defensive player of the year, if that's your plan, I think your plan sucks. I don't know if that was their plan, but if if your plan is to say, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, I want you to block the defensive potential defensive player, in my opinion, the, one of the toughest guys to block in the National Football League, I don't think that's a great plan. Okay, I'm not saying you're not going to block him. I'm saying you're not going to block him very often. This guy was an absolute nightmare all night. It wasn't just in the past game. I think he had one sack, four tackles for loss. I don't know how many pressures, but just when you talk about a disruptive player, this is some next level stuff here. And you can just tell he's watching film, man. I mean, jumping the snap, inside rip. Penetration knocks the guard off. John Rennie Jr. is backpedaling into the hole. You know, I mean, this is this is very very problematic. Now you get the next play. I mean, Zach Tom's a strong dude, and Max Crosby don't look like he's that big. And they're getting double teamed. Look what he does to Zach Tom here. I mean, just and Zach's got poor footwork and everything, but he's in a bad spot. I mean, all of this stuff is happening. All these quick throws, like why is he throwing short? I don't know. Because some this dude's in his face all night. Up top here. I mean, here, here's the thing. If you watch this play from the other angle, okay? This play's on tape already, guys, right? 85, if you're hipped off, if you're back, off the line of scrimmage, if you're back off the tackle, there's only one reason that you're there because you're split flow, you're going back. You think that guy's not watching tape? What's he going to do? He's going for it. Tightens down, knows that Zach Tom's going away. Zach Tom's probably not looking at him. Probably a tip there, definitely a tip on the backside. And it's Gonzo. They think that if they bring the back in motion, that's going to tip everybody off. But look, I mean, 31's not in a position where he's going to run the football from there unless it's a quick toss. Like, nobody lines up over the ass cheek of the, of the tackle to receive an inside zone play. That's just not how it works. I mean, he's in a full sprint. There is never a doubt in his mind that that's the play. Got outside here. On him again. You know, you, you feel this. You feel this work. And I'm not – listen, Zach Tom has been playing well. He's had to go against Aiden Hutchinson, up for defensive player of the year right now, and then this guy who's better. You know, this is a tough couple weeks. Max watches tape. Why do I say that? Well, we just saw it on the other side. A lot of guys go, why don't you just run right at him? Well, here's why. Because you can't single block him. And when you put 81 there, hipped off, off your sheet uh, Walker, Max has a pretty good idea that he's going backside. That means the tackle step into him. Inside move, game's over, right? They have calls 
in run blitzes affiliated with this. They're bringing the, the, the safety or the corner off the edge. This is all by design. You see these plays. This is what they decide. This is what they choose to run. It doesn't work every time, but you see how difficult it is to be successful when you don't have an abbreviation off of these kind of plays. Not an abbreviation, a, 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 an adjustment. This is kind of what I call, we used to play Junior Seau when he was with the Chargers, and they had a whole sale package. Like they literally had, when I say that, they had their whole playbook, and then part of their playbook was just like 10 players drawn in, and like Junior would have to be in like an area, but they just let Junior do Junior things. And they're kind of doing that with Max Crosby right now in the sense that most teams would be worried about Jordan Love breaking contain because he's a good runner. They don't care. They're just like, Max, do what you got to do to get to get open. Like, we just want you to create pressure. I mean, he beats this guy. He beats Zach Tom really bad right here. And it's it's it almost seems like it's not fair to the point where John Runyon Jr. I mean, Zach Tom is literally running back to where he thinks he's going to meet Max Crosby. I mean, literally turns and runs. Like, I haven't even seen that. I mean, he's in his head. That's a problem. And maybe he thought he was going to get tight end help here because they did that a couple times with the tight end where he would just run back to a spot. And then when the when Max released from the tight end, he would have, kind of be there already. But this turns into a the jailbreak to the point where John Rennie Jr. is like already just starts running the other way to block him on the backside. You know, it's almost like it was by design, but we kind of know that it's not. See him out here again. Comes back inside. And he's forcing... Jordan Love to escape. And, you know, this kind of, you know, back in the day, 10 years ago, you're thinking, oh, man, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers outside the pocket. Like, oh, it's trouble time. Because they had they were famous for the scramble drill with Mike McCarthy. Well, this team's not famous for the scramble drill. This is a little bit different. So in these big situations, like, they're just not ready yet. And then we talk about it again. This is a mismatch. First-year tight end. One of the best defensive players in the in the game. Hey, I want you to cut him off right here. There is no chance that he's getting cut off. I mean, you could draw it up on paper. You can draw it up. You can put the angle there. You can you can make the arrow. You can make it a little loop if you want to make it look like you're going to cut him off by running horizontal. Not going to work, guys. It just doesn't work. There's a lot of things you could do here. You could block the tackle back. And you can pull the tight end underneath for the linebacker right here. Make the guard go by his own because the guard gets paid to do this. You know? Block the defensive tackle by himself and have the tight end lead through to the backside linebacker. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do here, but this does not work. It just doesn't work. Not against a, guy, a, caliber, a caliber player that Max Crosby is. So Jordan had three picks last night. First time he's had three picks in a game. Worst, you know, worst statistically, worst game of his career. This is probably the worst one. Because right here, if that linebacker in the middle doesn't bite, which he doesn't, I'm talking about 41 in the middle, if he doesn't bite, man, you're you're off that shallow. You're taking it out to the sideline right now. If you're worried about time, you're taking it, you take it outside, you throw it away. That's it. It's the only option. Hopefully that's one of those, those you know, there's a lot of plays that you kind of see. By the way, it's a phenomenal tackle. You give credit because you read packs a punch, huh? Look at this thing. I bet she's been to the rodeo before, man. That was incredible. Now, this is why Lyman can't run. Ellen Jenkins does another great job here of, of setting the bumper. Excuse me, not setting the bumper. Of running this outside zone. He stays square to the line of scrimmage. Myers pushes off and then traps five here. And you just think this is a house call, right? I mean, this is a house call. There's nobody there. And... AJ jump cuts back and has a great run. I mean, has a great run. But because he had to jump cut, stop, and start again, you just wonder. Like, I, I look at that plan and I go, I think 
It's a good run. There was some meat on the bone there, man. You hit that hole. It's probably Gonzo. That's probably a house call. This is what I want to show you. This is the difference between having Jenkins in there and then Roy, it, the next guy, right? Whether it's Royce, whether it's really anybody else on this team. It's just fundamentals win the game. And when this guy's fundamentally sound, he's as good as there is. First step in the ground. Second step bumper stays on that three technique and gets vertical with Rashid Walker. He's not going to try to just leave him for Diablo and get up there fast. He's going to walk them back to five. All you have to do in this situation, this is the touchdown by AJ, is you have to make sure that that first guy doesn't make the tackle, and you just have to put a body in front of the linebacker because you have a 245-pound, 250-pound running back that should be able to carry an arm tackle for at least two yards, which he does. Phenomenal job. It's fundamentals win the game. It's easy. They ran that play 100 times, right? If you do it right and that one block, everybody else just break even. That one block creates a huge lane. Great job. So this is the big play to uh, uh, Christian Watson. And you see these, this, these DBs, they're confused. So we're carrying the – this is going to end up being a, a corner route. They both see the shallow cross right here, and one of them has got to go – we have the safety driving on the shallow – and the corner is thinking, maybe I should drive on the shallow. Great. Marcus Peters here gets all the way across from the backside corner position. Chases down Watson. This is the play of the game. Horse collars him. Half, distance, half the distance to the goal. They end up kicking a field goal from the four-yard line. Four-yard line, we line up, I think, twice in a shotgun. People are going, why do you go shotgun when A.G. Dillon runs the ball better under center? Well, they run shotgun because you have more options. You have more options than shotgun. And in other words, there's more of a threat of a pass than shotgun. Getting under center, the way that the routes work down there, play action pass. They don't, I mean, when's the last time you saw just a straight three step, five step drop, seven step drop under center? It doesn't happen very often. Usually you're getting under center and everything's built off your play action pass menu, right? So you're showing, turn it back. You don't really want to do that because you don't need deep developing routes down on the, on the uh, on the goal line, right? So unless you can go under center and sit pop pass, which you just don't see anymore, shotgun's going to work a lot more. Or shotgun's going to be called a lot more, I should say, not work necessarily, but called a lot more. Good route. So you see that? I'll show. Bank that one. That was a Marcus Peters playing soft zone route again. I love this play. This play makes sense. I, even if it's not Max Crosby. Nine technique, hipped off tight end, okay? You can tell that Musgrave's not going back now, right? You can just tell by his depth. But now they're going to run a, what we used to call this, a, a scoop, a slip, whatever you want to call it. Rashid Walker's going to come out with him up to that linebacker, okay? This is a great idea. Why? Because now you get a double team inside out. Now you can have Luke Musgrave come off as, with, with bad intentions, knowing that he has inside help. If Max Crosby swims this inside, he's got a big old Rashid Walker to have to deal with. Now Rashid can come up, came off too early, let him get, let him get his face crossed, right? But this is the kind of play that works against a really good defensive end. It's a good run. You see here, I call this is a quadzilla play, man. Uh, AJ, we you know AJ's had a, a rough start to the season. Max Crosby beats our tight end on the you know the split foot action again. Beats him on wrong shoulder. Comes up, has him in his clutches right here. AJ puts his head down. There's 700 pounds of dude trying to tackle him right now. He ends up getting four yards out of probably a you know two yard loss. This is a I think this is Max Crosby's sack. And again, it's just philosophy issue for me. Me personally, oh, okay, we're going to bang him out and then we're going to let uh, the next guy try to block him. How's that sound? It sounds terrible. It sounds terrible. You don't have first-year tight ends 
block in Max Crosby. Here's the thing that when you get into the zone, okay, when you're just playing at a high level, Max Crosby doesn't even see these guys. Okay. Max Crosby does not even see. These guys don't even exist in his world. They're just kind of in there. They're just kind of people that they might as well just be, you know, those, those bags just kind of in the way. And that's, that's how he's playing. Why did it happen? Why did they feel good about it? Well, we have to run this two man route. So we're going to block it up. Max protect two man route. Max protect. Oh, by the way, the tight ends are going to block the best player on the field. Maybe it works out the other way where he's over the right tackle and that's how he designed the play. You know, it's just un unfortunate, but God, it's too bad. Now, this is the second interception. So Marcus Peters is backed up. Safety help this time. So he there's no more. You see there's no more cushion. He feels good about where he's at. He can drive on this dig route. They've been, they've been running the route. Jordan Love hasn't seen that look. his pocket picked. Max Crosby, they run a TTE game here. Show it real quick. He's standing up. They run a TTE game. They've got Watson deep. They're trying to take shots, guys. They're trying to take shots, and he can get the ball that far. He just can't step into this throw because the guy's coming after again. Now, this play is unacceptable on a number of levels. Number one. Quarterback needs to throw the ball now, the top of the screen, but he can't throw it because he has pressure in his face. Christian Watson cannot let that play. You cannot allow that play to be the, the game ending turnover. You just can't. Now Jenkins gets beat here, outside move. Jordan Love Jordan Love wants wants to throw the ball right now. Zach Tom's getting bowled by Max Crosby. Jenkins is getting beat on the TE game. They just ran a mesh stunt. He cannot throw the ball. Unfortunately, what happens with young quarterbacks, my kids do this in soccer. They'll see something, they put their, their head back down to the ball to touch it again, and then they think that play still plays over. That play is no longer viable because you'll throw you can throw it out of the end zone. But if you had to move off the spot, chances are the play's not going to be there when you come back, especially when you're, you're thrown into the red zone. So that's the pick. That's the game. That's how it goes. So let's do a keys to victory review. Number one, hold the Raiders to a season average in the run game. We didn't hold them to their average, but come on. 3.3 yards per carry versus 2.7 yards per carry. That's good enough to win. So I... I'm going to say that was a good that was a, that was a winning performance, my opinion. Keep Devontae Adams for having a signature game, four for 45, done. I mean, really, he got most of those yards on one drive. Played a good game against Sam. Now I think we probably gave up some. You know, Cobra Myers had plays that he might not have had in other games for not paying so much attention to Devontae. But number three here, man, follow Crosby around. No single rushes and passing situations. This guy blew up the game plan. Because we ran 12, 13, 21 personnel to account for him using the guys that we probably shouldn't account for him with. And then we didn't account for him at all at, at, at some times. He has one sack, four tackles for loss, constant pressure. Just honestly destroyed your game plan. Absolutely destroyed your game plan. Good, bad, and ugly. The bad... We lost the turnover battle one to three. I think that's the third week in the row we lost the turnover battle. We didn't get much out of special teams. We had one punt return for two yards. They were happy letting the ball go out of the end zone. We talked about this before. Last week, they didn't do a good job. Keyshawn uh, Nixon returning the ball. Now they just decided, fair enough. You guys can just kick it out of the back. We'll take it at the 25. And then offensively, we can see what they're thinking. They're worried about Max Crosby. How are we going to game plan for this guy? But again, I just don't know. Um, without Aaron Jones in this lineup, I don't know if you can effectively run that game plan with 12, 21 personnel, the, the, the style of running you, that you want to accomplish. You just, you just see if there's a couple of those home runs or are, are home runs, the feel of the game changes, right? If he bounces the one, the feel of the game changes. 
couple couple of the flat passes they can work in for for Aaron that he makes something happen. The feel of the game changes. Like this is where ha- the one or two players missing makes a huge difference for sure. And then the ugly. Jordan Love's regressed the last two weeks. Um, I think he has the worst completion percentage of the league, like 55%, something like that, for starters. He's near the bottom in turnovers now. Um, last two games in primetime television. One touchdown, five interceptions, been sacked seven times. Not all his fault. A lot of blame to go around. But I think a lot of people started looking at this, looking at the score sheet, looking at the results, going, oh, yeah, he's so great, he's so great. Reality's sinking in. They're going to have to figure that out. Um, the Packers are constantly playing from behind. They have the one comeback win versus the Saints, but they're constantly, it feels like every single game, you're like getting yourself in the hole and you're hoping that fourth quarter Jordan Love shows up and does something magical. Uh, J. Alexander said something to the effect of, you know, the defense understands it needs to pitch shutouts or score, you know, score the football in order to, in order to win these games until um, the offense gets their mojo back or so, some Austin Powers reference. I don't know. But, you know, basically, like, I don't know what he's, I don't know if he's – I don't think he's throwing shade. I think it's just where it is right now it's as far as this is the state of that team. And I think that once that's expressed verbally, you're not going to forget it, certainly. And it's going to go around that locker room a little bit now, and they'll probably make it, uh, uh, some statements about it. You hope that he doesn't say that necessarily because it doesn't put a lot of um, confidence in your off- the offensive side of the football. But uh, maybe they don't deserve it. Uh, I guess the only thing I would say is you know, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams carried that defense for a long time. You know, they they weren't necessarily a a top five group for their entire careers. Uh, Let's do some what I got wrongs. Maybe some observations. So we talked about getting after Jimmy G. I think we did that. Um, Getting the running game going, stopping the run. I think we did half of that. You know, we were better. We're not very good. We were better. Um, Again, we talked about, I think the Packers are out thinking themselves, certainly. There's certainly plays to be made in the run game. That we saw there, there are some missiles that turn into explosives. Um, you can't expect the tight ends to block the defensive player of the year candidate. I just can't do it. And I and I just I love more than anybody out here. I probably love, hey, you're gonna run 21, 12, 13 personnel. I love it. There's nobody who likes that more than I do. I just don't know if it works with this team without Aaron Jones. Like you see the I point out um uh, Elton Jenkins on some of those blocks, those are not, they're not commonplace everywhere, but they're, you would see those a lot more with some other lines right now, as far as great technique, just body position, just loving what you see. You know, you don't see a ton of those. I mean, I'm pointing them out because they're somewhat unique. They're not completely, they're not like unicorns, but you know, he's good for a reason. Certainly. But you need more of like those aren't those are just fundamental technically sound plays. I'm not showing you him pancaking somebody, picking up somebody, throwing him into the you know the the fans, the stands. I'm just showing you technically sound plays with the good fundamentals, and we just need to see I think more of that. Okay. Um, so what are the areas of opportunity? I think for the third week in a row, we'll just keep them relatively the same. The running game has to improve. Got to figure out that formula and. The running game has to mesh up with the passing game so that you can have everything you want on your menu that's complementary, right? If you're gonna run the if you're gonna run the the hipped off tight end with the split flow, you got to have an action off of that. You got to have something where you're running the scoop block off of the front side like the Raiders did. You just have to have some stuff that's different that that turns into not only in the run game, but also complementing the pass game so that you don't feel like it's kind of these all or nothing short round moments. And again, I think they had some more stuff dialed up in the passing game that we saw. The reason for the short passes is Max Crosby's in your face and you're feeling that pressure all the night. You're just going to throw those check downs. Um, I like the physicality from the defense. Have to commu- improve the communication in the secondary. That's a, that's a, a, a job that is a never ending journey. I think, you know, quite frankly, Less than 20 points wins games. Got to win with – you score 20 points, you got to – or excuse me, you give up less than 20, you got to win games. All right, let's do a handful of listener questions in the last five minutes here. A lot of questions around the tight end position, running away versus Zach Crosby. I think we addressed that. Like, if you run at him, if you don't double-team him, he beats he beats the single guy, especially when you're giving away to cues and, and tells. 
by formation, by, by system. He killed us either way. I don't think personally, if you can't dance, don't come to the party with me with the tight ends. I don't think it's their fault. I think they're putting in situations they can't handle. I think that's a problem. Quite frankly, I don't think – I just I just can't imagine sitting in a tight end room after this game and be like, you didn't do a good job. He'd be like, well, I can't block that guy. I'm not good enough yet. Maybe I will be, but I'm not good enough now. He's better than I am. And so you put me in a situation where he's got leverage. He's got – He's, he's, he's got the skill. He's got the skill set. I can't do this. I can't do what you're asking me to do. You know, if, if somebody comes to you and says, I need you to do something you can't do, you got to do it. You're an NFL player. You get paid to, you get paid to do this, but you also kind of, you're kind of going like, well, you might hurt 10 other players of the entire team by asking me to do something that's not, not, not possible. Talked about it. Why in shotgun on the four going in more options. Uh, is this worse? Is this a worse loss than the Lions? Well, I think the defense will play well. You know, it, the Lions' def- offense kicked the hell out of our team. Defense played pretty well this game. Had a turnover, had a handful of sacks, tackles for loss. I think won the line of scrimmage battle for the most part. Gave up less than four yards of carry. That's all. That's that's winning football. It's winning football. So, I think offensively this was as as bad as it gets. Um, I think there's some reasons for that, but I think it's as bad as it gets. Uh, I, I don't know if I've seen one guy destroy a game plan like Max Crosby did yesterday. That's That was weird. He just, I mean, just destroyed it. Question, what is the offense good at? Fully healthy with Aaron Jones, I think they're good at Aaron Jones getting the football. Not fully healthy without Aaron Jones, I don't know what they're good at. I think they'll find something. I have every confidence that this staff and these players that are good players will find something – you're, you're dealing with first and second year wide receivers and tight ends. That is a, you don't have any veterans in those rooms, man. It's a, it's, it's a, that's a real issue. You have a youngest team in football. Like this is a real problem. This is growing pains. This is the reality of what happens. You can't walk in off of, uh, you know, North Dakota state and be like, I'm here to take on the world. That's tough, man. That is a really tough ask. Is the offense better or worth with Watson? Because they'll put in the run play for minus five yards, for example. Uh, they're better. But, you know, it's like they, they could have took the shot. They could have little John him on the, the, the play before, and so they don't. So they come around, and they, instead of taking that shot play, they run the, orb, the orbit motion with, uh, with, with the toss, and you go, he's not a running back. I know that's worked before. Like, I get it. Like, it worked against the Bears last year. Like, I know that it works, and I know that he's got the sp- – you know that he's good. Like, he had the 77-yard play that, he, that Marcus caught him with a horse collar – but if I'm being honest, I'd rather see them take the shot with an incompletion than the orbit motion with the the, the toss handoff, me personally. So sometimes when you have – it's the same thing that happens when, like, your offensive line's hurt and you come up with this game plan, you move the football. And then your offensive linemen come back and you're like, oh, I got my guys back. I can just run the regular stuff. Well, you're, you, the other stuff was working. Don't run the new stuff. Run the stuff that worked last week and just know that it's going to be run better because you have better players now. But don't just, oh, I can drop back 70 times because I got, you know, my offensive linebacker. Like that philosophy, I think that happens a lot in football. It's like, oh, I got this guy back. I can do all these things now. Were, were you winning before? Because if you're winning before, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't overthink yourself. Uh, why does love throw short? Um, here's how they design. Just real quick. Here's how you design a, a, a game plan. You look at, okay, so you, you, you pour through film. And they're looking like globally. Okay, where are they at? Like, what scheme, personnel, formations are this team in in this situations on the field? First, second, third down. You know, passing situations. Are they up? At, they kind of they get all this information, and then most teams want to build out their. Let's start with our run game. So, what runs look good? What philo- what schemes look good against this team? What players do we want to do we want to? Um, set, who are the fish? What players do we want to exploit? And then they're going to build that passing game off of it. So, like, for example, this week, they're thinking, all right, we want to get in, like, multiple tight ends, multiple multiple running back personnel groups, and we want to throw a bunch of people at Max Crosby. We want to, we, we want to get into these looks where they keep in base – they're in base personnel, and we feel really good about our run game there. We think we can just pound. We can go straight ahead. We don't think their defensive tackles are really good. We think we can pound. And then when we get into the passing game, you realize, like, Okay, well now we have two tight ends in the game. We have Dobbs and Watson, let's say, on the outside. But then you, you know, you realistically you've you've got you've got AJ Dillon, Dobbs, Watson, Musgrave, and Kraft. Okay. And we like Musgrave in the passing game. 
it just changes things a little bit. I think as far as what your usual philosophy is when you're in like a three by one look or you're, you know, you're 11 personnel. So you're trying to marry up all the ways you want to run the ball or with some teams, how you want to pass it, but you're trying to marry up like one side with the other. How can we make this look like that? How can we make our split flow look like, um, like a quarterback keeper? How can we make all these motions? How can we motion the X across the ball enough times where we, we hand it off to the left, to the right, we pitch it to them. We run a, a keep pass. We have, we have a play action pass off. Like how can we make seven plays off of this one motion? So they have no idea what's going on. And then, how can we continue to set up like run plays by making the defense expand horizontally and cover every blade of grass so that we can hit them right up the middle? Like, how do we do all that stuff? And it's really, it's not, it, it takes a lot of time. There's some complications about it, but philosophically, you're just trying to like, how do we find, how do we exploit space? How do we exploit space? And, and the teams that are really good at doing that, we saw with the Raiders, like something that did really well from an offensive standpoint is they got into certain looks they knew that we were going to key and they ran something different and, or they found a certain looks that we have shown on defense to do X, Y, and Z. And they just put in a play the reverse, for example, that exploits it. So those are the things as you continue to develop and improve, you see happening more and more often. I think right now, at least on the offensive side of the ball, they're more thinking about like, what do we do? Well, you know, somebody asked the question, what do we do? Well, what do we do? Well, well, you kind of got to come up with that before you're just like, well, we, you know what we do? Well, we have Tyree kill on our team. We can, he can beat everybody. So we throw the ball to him. It's not that easy. Definitely is not that easy. So I hope, uh, hope with that, everybody enjoys the rest of the week. We have a bye week now. Remember hit that subscribe button, rate and review us on our process to perform channel on YouTube. Thanks to betonline.ag. For sponsoring us, I'm Mike Wall, Mike Wall 68 on Twitter, Prostitute Perform Instagram. You guys have a